Hi everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Welcome back to the Jansen Art Studio. I'm David Jansen and I'm going to show you another uh, technique today. Of course, I use the Heritage Multimedia. Now all the links for everything I use is right down below down there in the description. So make sure you click out and check out those links. But I get a lot of questions out there about Heritage, the Heritage Acrylics and painting with oil techniques my friend, a lot of people always write to me and saying is this oils do you use oils no i haven't used oils for 30 years i started out for 10 years painting with oils but uh, i haven't used them for 30 years i use all the acrylics now most of the time i show you in all my other videos i do what's called global color where we pre-mix in a medium that comes with it called extender and then we go paint and uh but i also use them uh, as in a pure acrylic and what i have here will come down here to the palette shot is i've just taken some of the tubes uh, here of the acrylic now these are artist grade acrylics these are astm class one pigments they're non-fugitive they're beautiful heavy pigmented colors and what i do is just take a little bit and i squirt these out here i'm going to use them pre acrylic just on my palette here now many times you know you see people put them out on paper towels and everything with the older acrylics and stuff, that's what they do. With the Heritage, we don't need to do uh, that uh, with these paints. You can just put them right out onto your palette. Many times here, like what's underneath here, I have a piece of glass here. And many times I paint just like oil painters do on top of glass. So sometimes I use the multimedia palette like this, and sometimes I use the glass. And in future and other videos, I'll show you how I go about using the glass. Today, what I'm going to show you is we'll do a quick, not a quick, it'll take about an hour or so to do this painting. We're going to do a rose and we're going to do some poppies. And uh, I want to show you what we call the acrylic halftone painting technique. We're not going to do any real blending. We're going to do a halftone. Now here I have out here in this little cap here, this is my extender medium. This is the Global Art Supply extender medium. This does slow down the drying time of the paint. I'm just going to be brush mixing it into the colors as we're doing this. Uh, this is something I like to do. Uh, rather than grabbing to the water, I'm going to do this. I will sometimes grab to the water, which I have right over here. But uh, it's mostly going to be the extender uh, that I'm going to be using. Okay, let's get into this. So first off, what I like to do is I like to make kind of a brownish color to do a little sketching of my design. And uh, these are the fusion brushes. And again, all the things that I use down there are in the links right down below. So I'm going to make a brownish color. This is the this is the Heritage Six Color Set uh, acrylic set. So. These are what the colors all look like, and uh, so you can uh, see that we have it on Amazon, and we have it on our websites and stuff. But anyway, let's get into this, make kind of this little brownish uh, type color. I use a little bit of my naphthol red light, which is a warm color, and I'll use a touch of my blue here, and I'll put those together. And I'm just going to use a, um, a small brush here, and I'm just going to come in and do a little sketching here. Let me just mix up a a little bit of um, a little bit of extender into this. This will help keep it wet for just a few minutes here, and. Um, so what I'm going to do is come up here and uh, I'll start to do a little bit of my sketching. So uh, I'm going to put a rose. Let's put a rose like right up in here. Now a rose is usually generally a circle, something right around in here. I don't like to put it, uh, you know, uh, right in the very center of the design here. I'm going to kind of push it off to one side. What I usually do is set the gaze of the rose. The gaze of the rose is set by the center of the rose. So if I put a, uh, you know, a little bit of the dark there and maybe Maybe we say, uh, you know, it's it bottom of its bowl is going to come down through here. And I'm just going to loosen up some of these edges here just a bit. Very casual. And I know it doesn't look like much, but don't worry about it. And so we'll drop that in. Sometimes I drop in, uh, like you've seen me do in other types of videos, I'll drop in some stem lines. Most of this is just to loosen up myself, uh, you know, to, to get a, a more casual feeling to what it is that I want to paint. Now, I want to drop a poppy in here. Maybe we'll drop one or two other little poppies coming off here, off to this way. As you turn a poppy, since the poppy is round, as you turn it, though, as you lean it back to go a different direction, it's going to become more oval-shaped here. So maybe we'll drop one or two or so down here to this side here. We might even drop uh, just some... Uh, poppy buds or something down here or might even do a rosebud we might even do a rosebud back down in here um, and then uh, a few uh, other little leaf shapes now some of these I may or may not keep it just just helps me kind of see where 
what I might be doing here uh, into the painting here. So, and I'm using the long handle brushes. Um, up on the Amazon, we uh, we have the short handle brushes, the, the same version of these brushes. This is um, uh, just a uh, number six Fusion Flat. We have the short handle version of it, but we also make a long handle version of it for people who like to use the long handle. So sometimes I use the short, and a lot of videos you see me use the short handle version, and sometimes I use the long handle version. Now, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to take a three-quarter inch flat. I'll put a little extender uh, into this, uh, and I'm just going to add or, or make up a, a kind of a a bluish kind of color, blue gray. I'll drop it right into some of my uh, my uh, brown color that I had here, thalo blue, and some white, and right into some of the brown. And I'm just going to loosen up here into my background. Now, when I paint uh, that what's called the half tone, and we'll talk, we'll go into this technique quite a bit here in just a little bit. Um, when I'm painting with this half tone technique here, I'm not blending. So I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not adding extender really here to make the colors dry super slow so that they will, um, they will blend. I'm using it just to thin out the paint and get it to move a little bit across the surface. I could use water as well, but uh, I'm a big fan of, of extender medium. I love the medium. It's a non-toxic medium. Matter of fact, it's a food product. You use it in a lot of uh, food things, uh, food preparations and stuff, so it's very, very safe. But it doesn't, the extender is is something that's formulated to work with the heritage. It doesn't work with other brands of acrylics. So don't think you can just go grab the extender and, and use some of your own acrylics and stuff. It doesn't always work, okay? So uh, I'm just gonna loosen up my background here. And uh, some of you know that I like to add some greens and stuff down below. Greens can be made from, you know, traditionally old olive greens are made from your yellow and black here. That's your olive type greens here. If I want to really tone it down, I can, but keep it kind of warm, I can add a tiny bit of the red violet there. I mean, excuse me, the, the uh, naphtha red light. The red violet will tone it and cool it, which really what I want to do here to this one, because I'm going to put it down here into the shadow area here. So I'm going to push a few little greens down in through here. Just loosen them up and get them to skip and jump around like this. This jumping around and this is called a granulation to it. When you use your paints very dry, if you notice on my palette, they're not real soupy wet. They're very, it's just enough to get it to move. And that makes it kind of give it what we call here this granulation look. And and when I do a half tone technique, I like that. Now I can smooth it out by just let's go over here towards the blue and the green and so if i want to take an area that softens between the two i'll just take some right in between the two here these two colors and put that out thin it out a little bit more and i'll soften those two colors kind of together into this area here like this and um Sometimes I'll do that. Now let me push this up onto the edge so I can paint off the edge. One of the things I like to do with paintings today that I do, a, I sell a lot of my work, well, and teach internationally and everything, but I like to, uh, uh, I like to make compositions that uh, are heavy to one side, lighter to the other side, and those just seem to go with today's market very very well so i'll take a little bit of that color off over here so if i want it to smooth out a little bit i'll add a little more extender to it that's just thinning the color here uh it's i'm not i but i don't want to blend too much here really i can go back and forth between my lights and my blues here let's just take a a little bit of a brighter blue here and just punch this up right in here just a bit because one of the things that i'm going to do with this painting is i'm going to have a lot of bright oranges and and stuff so we're just going to punch some of that color up right here just a touch more really kind of shock you here for just a little bit as we get some of these other colors on and again i like to uh, take some of these colors off to the edge here let's take some of that right off here right off to the top up here like this 
I'll let some of that granulate down, but you can see here where I have all that extra extender, it's going to stay wet and I'll get a different, I'll get a slightly different look than a, a granulated look. So here's where the paint is really dry. You get this granulated look and here's where I have quite a bit of extender onto the surface. I get a wet look to it or um, a real kind of a blended look to it. And so I thin it out with a little extender and that's what gives you that. And I can take the two and use the two together to kind of soften each other a little bit as well. I use all different kinds of techniques. I'm a technique painter. That's what I am. And for years, for my 40 year history as, as an art teacher and lecturer and traveling the world, um, I've studied techniques. I've gone over to Europe several times, studied techniques. I've spent my entire life studying techniques of uh, artists from the fine arts through the impressionists through all the way to the Dutch. I mean, I do a lot of Dutch master techniques and I study those techniques. So I'm, then I learn those techniques and I apply those techniques. Many art painters today, they go out and they just start painting. And, you know, to me, it's kind of like trying to drive a car without knowing which pedal does what. You need to understand some of the different techniques and how to make your products perform so that you don't get frustration and gives you ideas. And so this halftone technique is one of them. Uh, you know, I, so like I say, I use hundreds of different techniques uh, when I paint. And, uh, you know, I wake up in the morning and say, hey, today I'm going to paint this or I'm going to paint that. And I may do a Dutch or I may do a Flemish technique. I may do the seven layers of the Flemish technique or I may just do a couple of them or I may do a, a Eugene Pettit technique or an Impressionistic technique, a Monet, a Rembrandt technique, a glazing technique. There's just so many of them. So anyway, let's come back here. My friend, I'm going to go to a little bit. Uh, I like to use old, old brushes here. This is a, uh, uh, a one of my long handled fusions. It's a, it's a uh, number 10 um, and it's an older one. Like I say, you could use a short handled or long handled one here. I'm going to block in some of the colors that I want to use. I'm going to have kind of a white rose here, but my rose is going to have um, some red in it and some really some green in it. And greens can come from black and yellow or blue here, or I could take both of them together. I'm going to make kind of a grayish color here. I want to lean that color kind of to the red side here. So, and I'll add in a little bit of extender here. And I'm going to start right into here with this rose. So this is going to be a white rose. It's going to have some greens and reds and stuff in it. And right now, what you want to do, and I know this, some of you right now are having maybe a little bit of uh, heart problems here as I'm putting this on so casually, but this is what I want to do. This There's um, a lot of different half-tone techniques. Uh, you can start out, you know, copying things with uh, half-tone techniques, or you can do like I'm doing here. You start out extremely casual, then you start using the half-tone techniques in refining and stuff to it. And so I'm going to start out extremely casual. Let's drop in Let's come in here and get brave for a second. Let's go and grab a little naphthol red light, a little red violet. Let's come in right into here and let's start to push some reds right into this area. Now, as I'm going to push this in, we want to, just like with the last video I showed you here that we have up here, optical painting techniques, I don't want to stroke as much as I want to make marks. So today I want to, I want to build a little bit on what I showed you in the last video, the optical painting techniques, and making some marks here. And so my brush will move. I don't want to stroke. I want to move my brush in many different uh, directions here. Now, sometimes when I paint the halftone technique, I paint it very precise because it gives you, you know, you can do some very beautiful uh, precision copying of elements, realistic painting with the halftone technique. But today uh, I want to just be very casual and paint the, the pure optics of it. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting some red violet, some cool color in here, and some of my, as I'm coming out of that cool area, which is down into the lower part of the rose here. Uh, I want to start to warm that up, and I'm doing that by adding some of my naphthol red light and putting a little bit of that color in. To the bottom of the flower here, if I've decided my light's going to come here, then to the bottom of the flower here, I'll want to cool some of this area. So a little bit of that red-violet goes into there. And 
like I say, later on we can add some more greens and stuff like that into there. Now, poppy wise, I'm going to shock everybody again we're going to go to an orange and a good orange comes from Hansa yellow which is the brighter of the yellow about three parts Hansa yellow to one part of the uh, naphthol red light gives you a real nice orange and let's push this orange in here right now and if you notice I stroke my brush in many different directions here again sometimes I will use uh, I'll use my paper towel uh, you know, to grab a different look, but I want to break these edges. I don't, with this halftone technique that I'm using today, uh, I want to, and we're painting an impressionistic version of it, I want to break these edges. I don't want these edges out here to be super perfect. Let's get a little more red into that since it's going to go behind this. Let's get a little red and a little red violet. Let's cool it down here just a little bit. The red violet will cool it down. The red will darken it. Here. So we'll set up a little bit of the temperature into that. We'll take this cool red violet and a little bit of that red here. Let's come back to this one here and let's set its temperature in as well. So it'll have a, a dropping down here. Pull out, sometimes pull in and out. Use the corner of your brush. Push in and out. Use the corner, moving that in and out there like that. Uh, get some differences there with that. Uh, let's come over here and you know we were thinking about maybe having a little poppy bud here you know, so sometimes I'll touch into a little extender sometimes I'll let the paint get very dry here and that's what I like uh, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna paint this very very casual well I'll show you other things and other lessons where we do more realistic um, very realism paintings and stuff and here I want to I want to really push to an impressionism we drop that off of that there for right now. I want to push to impressionism and stuff since it is so very popular. I got a little little bug there. It is so popular here to in today's uh, with today's painters. This impressionism uh, is really nice. Let's let's cool that off a little bit more. Red violet, a little more na of the naphthol red light here. Let's really drop that color back. That'll really create contrast there for my between my rose and um, the, these poppies. Now, I have. Let's talk, let's talk about the half tone itself. I just made a mark here and a mark here, and I have a difference here between these two colors. So on my palette, you can see that difference between those two colors. Now, what the half tone is, rather than blending, rather than coming in here and working your brush back and forth to blend that, what the artist does, what you well, let me put it this way: what you don't want to do is go in there and work it, work it, work it, because then when you step back from it, it becomes flat and uninteresting and looks like a plastic flower. So what the impressionists did is they have optical type techniques. As you step back a little bit, and they, those, your eye, the human eye, will start to blend those. And usually three to five uh, feet or so. I like to paint around five, five to six feet. Some artists use 10, 10, 15 feet, depends on the size of the canvas, as their, their optical point at which you know they see that starting to soften out. So they would step back from the easel and look at it. But what I want to do is, let's say I want to come in and soften that. I have the darker color I just used here right here and this is my lighter orange and so I want to come right with the color that's going to be between these two so I might even make it a little bit more red so I'll come with a color that's going to be between this orange and between this one touch in just a little bit of that and if I put a mark of that right next to that area there that helps soften that out now see I'm not blending it I'm just putting the mark right there and that helps soften that color exchange out right there and that's what I want to do so let's come right in here and put that color right there like that and we don't need to blend it you just need to push that color in there because that color sits halfway through it here so and we'll push it right in there maybe we'll come one more time right here with a little uh, with another half tone between this one and this darker one and just soften that and soften that edge right there and you can see you start to blend this area out uh, quite a bit. As a matter of fact, we look at this camera here where it's stepped back. That camera has stepped back six feet and you'll start to really see that this painting starts to soften out. 
that is the optics of it. And so I, I put up another YouTube video about the optics um, and painting a different type of Eugene Pettit's optic, optic uh, technique, which is different from this. But half tones are so very, very important. Now, I want to carry that tone. I'm going to come up to here and maybe use that tone to help refine this little edge of this poppy over here. I don't know the edges of these petals yet. I'm just looking at the colors and getting some of this stuff in here. Maybe I want to make this little edge, this little poppy come out here just a bit more this way here like this. Okay. And uh, let's take just a bit of that color and we'll just refine that. I, don't, I want to be careful not to refine the edges too much right now because I want to, I just want to give the impressions of the poppies and I don't want to do too much refining. I'm not there in the painting yet. So let's come back up here and let's put in a little bit more of an edge here, slightly orange, maybe a touch more yellow. We'll go to this way on the tone. We'll go over towards our yellows this way and I'll come up here and let this get a little warmer out here here to that that brighter little orange that's going to come off here. This will play against that rose really nice. Now to soften this into here, I'm going to go back to my half tone right back this way between the two and I'll put a mark or a tone right in between those two that'll soften it and let's soften that one more time. I can leave that because at six feet it'll look soft but if I if I wanted to soften that even more, I would slide this way onto my palette towards my reds here just a bit more and I'll push that tone in and let's go right to our deeper reds here and as you can see now I've got this look that this is almost purely blended and I haven't worked or blended or done any of that. Um, I'm painting strictly by the tones across here and this is really what I love about acrylic painting is that I can do this and I can do it so very fast and if you're painting like this you don't need oils. You don't, you, you really don't. Matter of fact, <clears throat> many times I like the painting, the paint to dry quite fast and oils just would get into the way to stay too wet. So let's come back out and let's refine this uh, petal here. Maybe this will be a petal here that'll come back like that here onto this. This will be a turned poppy. Let's give it a little more of a, a red tipped edge here. Maybe here petal. This is, it's going to be turned here. But so we'll give it a little bit more of a red, maybe turned petal there. This one comes out like uh, like that, maybe. Um, give it a, a maybe a, a petal down here, a little deeper red petal that'll be towards that bottom there. We'll put more of an orange little stroke there. And I'll, so I head this way towards my oranges, pick up some of that tone, strike it right into there and push that tone in like that. Now that's that's pretty much looks soft. You could create a half tone in there, but I would leave the mark like that so I don't get it too uh, too blended looking because you start stepping back and they, your eye is going to blend these as well. So let's, uh, let's keep that in mind here. Let's turn this one. Um, let's put a little different kind of one here. Let's put a little more because you'll see the center of this one a little bit more. So let's put a brighter yellow orange right in there. Just I'm just pounding some of that color right in there. So I'm using this color. Now I'll go half tone back down this way here and soften the edge of that color there right like that. Maybe soften this edge here right like that. There we go. And I'll leave that. Maybe I want to have just a bit more yellow and I can. So I'll go over this way to this tone. So here's my tones really to my flowers. So I'll, let's just take, let me show you a, a half tone. I'll come in here and I'll say, okay, I want a brighter yellow bang strike right there into that poppy. Now I know that that's really bright and some of you, uh, you know, just had a heart attack, but that's, it's okay. Well, I'm going to come down now and soften that. This is where the last one was and I want to come down towards it and I'll come right in between the two there and that's a little bit of a jump so let's go back here towards this yellow just a little bit more and let's just touch that yellow right in there like that and that's where I'm looking for a little bit more yellow 
and I'll touch that right in there. Now I'll go back towards this other orange and I'll touch that and that's where it becomes soft. It's optically soft. Now I have a little bit of an edge there. Now sometimes I leave that. Sometimes I'll just come in with just a little bit of a mark to break that edge just a bit like that. I'm not blending it. I'm stroking another tone here and I like that. Let's pull that out there like that. And that's kind of nice. Matter of fact, let's take some of that orange kind of tone. Let's build the bottom of this front petal of this poppy here with that color. And that's kind of pretty here like that. We'll build this edge here, like maybe this edge of this one a little bit more here. And we'll do a, a little bit more of the darker red here uh, to the edge. I can do a little bit of refining to those petal edges if I want to give them their crinkly uh, little uh, edges or if I want I want this one to be kind of turned up and I want the darker petal up in front the lighter petal to the back here so I'll drop that in there now uh, this petal here I was working on it being dark and then the center of it though since we have those nice uh, um, yellow centers let's go back over grab some of this yellow and let's just push some of that yellow right in there like that and you just got to get brave this is this is what makes the painting fun is you just go in there and you just do it and because you can soften and it's only paint and you can cover it up and change it but you go in there with confidence and this is what i tell you in so many other lessons not only youtube but all of my uh, educational dvds and everything those of you who are studying with me i always tell you that you paint with confidence and it's much better to do a stroke that's wrong but do it confident than to have this real timid little thing sitting in there get confident with it because we can soften it out let's get confident with our color let's drop some of that in there like that okay that's going to make a beautiful poppy in here now we were here so we were here with our yellow right and so i'm going to drop this way here and look at this orange that I was, which was right in here. And I'll come right between the two here. This is what's called the half tone. So I'll come right between those two, right in here. Now this tone is going to sit right between the yellow and this one, and it's going to soften it. Maybe I want to pull out a little bit here like this. So maybe I want to do that and do that and see how that instantly softens it. Maybe I can pick up just a little more and hit this edge right here just the edge of that and I'll soften now I soften that I can still see that stroke a little bit but that's what makes it interesting here and we'll soften this out here just a bit and I love it when the paint now these are already starting to dry here just a bit and so the half tone but you don't need it wet because you're painting half tones let's put a half tone right in there let's go this I want to head this way to the yellow so I'll head this way with my colors and I'll drop that in there like that. Let's get a little more yellow. Let's let's express that out. Just a little more power right there. Now I've got that big difference there. Let's go in with our half tone. And let's push that in. Now let's go more towards our orange. And we'll go this way. And just soften that edge out. Let's put a stroke of that orange right in there. And pull some of that out. Let's push that mark. I don't want to lose that bright yet orange kind of mark that's in there for these poppies. I really, really want that brighter yellow in there. I want to keep and preserve that. I love that, especially those strokes like that. I can blend that out, but I want to keep those textures and those strokes as much as possible in there because I like that. I like that in that poppy. I like the movement of it in that particular poppy. Now, let's go back so here's my naplo red light here's my darkest of the tones i'm using to paint these poppies here so my naplo red light my red violet i'll come right into here i'll push push in just a little bit more of that tone there of these two colors together about one to one let's push in and let's be a a little bit uh careful here i'm going to add just a touch of extender we'll we'll head towards our orange just a bit here just a bit towards the orange because I'm want to. I'm looking at this orange and I want to soften that just a bit. So I want a, a tone right between the two here, just like that to soften it. See, 
And if I want to get rid of that mark, now I like that mark, but if I want to get rid of that mark, I would head this way. Or if I want to refine that petal edge just a little bit more, so I have a little more interest or depth to that petal edge, let's get a little darker edge here, maybe right here like this, so that little poppy has some dark and some light edges there. Let's put a little more dark right out here, pull that in. And again, if I want to soften that, soften that loose edge of it there, I can. But I kind of like those colors. Let's uh, get brave with our yellow again. And let's come right into here and drop this poppy in here. And I'm just going to kind of stroke around. And I, I like to use the corners of the brush. And so I'm push that around like that. Now, this one is mostly dry in here, okay, because I'm using this as pure acrylic. It is a little sticky, um, but it's mostly dry. So I'll push that in. I want to brighten that just a bit more here. Put a little more Hansa into that. Just come around loose. Very, very light touches with my brush here. Very loose. And now if I want to soften this, I've got to come anywhere in here to the orange and I'll just push a stroke right there and that'll soften it. Let's push a stroke right here and that'll soften that into that painting and let's push a stroke right there and this is where you have to start looking at it optically. Let's push stroke there and this is you know if I'm if I'm not filming if I'm painting at my easel this is where I start stepping back and start looking at this poppy. Let's go back over here. So when we're looking at this camera here, and I have a monitor that's right here that I'm looking at in this filming room, and one of the things that I'm looking at when I look at that is I'm looking at what do I see? How do I see it blended? And I see on this, when I step back to this camera here, you see it quite a bit more blended, just like I showed you in the last uh, optical video, the last one I did. Matter of fact, last week <laughs> I did. Um, and so it optically stepping back it has a lot of interest so I don't want to lose that interest I might want to put a little more dark build that edge just a bit more here a few little touches of that to help uh, build those petals maybe out here again and again soften that into this with a little half tone right there like that and you know that that little edge right there is a little too curved for me so I'll just break it there with the brush. I don't, um, when I'm painting impressionistic, I don't like to do too many curved strokes. I like to make marks that are, that have, uh, that are very spontaneous and move in all different kinds of directions. That to me is where you get the interest into a, into a flower or into a painting. So here I'll build a little more paint. I can soften that at any time or I can leave that little poppy just kind of, um, pulling like this and starting to to uh, get some of those light colors out here onto the edge of this. Maybe a bit of a red-orange edge to that petal there. Leave that very, very casual. Down, further down here, let's, uh, I'm just adding a little extender. Anytime I want to move the paint, I can I use the extender. You could also use water, but I like to use the extender. I like the the oily feel of the extender, the sliding of the extender, but I don't want to do any blending with this. I'm painting optically. Let's put in a bit of an orange here. Let's go down to make that red a little bit more orange right here, and let's just drop a little bit of that into the center. I don't, since this one sits further back down here, I want it to really be kind of toned. Now, you can make a, a beautiful green color, uh, black and yellow here, your greens, which we're going to want to use on some of our stuff, your olive greens, like I say, those greens into this will tone it down. And you can see it tones it, grazes, grays these colors down. Um, and those will keep them from getting too bright back down here like that. And that green, and it's a beautiful color to do because I'm going to use some of this green here. Matter of fact, I'll just toss a little bit of that green right now. Just kind of a thin little bit of that into that rose and that's going to cause quite a bit of, of uh, nice interest to the rose. But that green, you know, be an artist. That green can be just touched into a few places like like in there into your poppies here. Let's go a little yellow, yellow, green. Touch a little bit around into the painting. I like to 
that helps break stuff up and it helps add color and add interest. That's what artists do. We move color. We move color. We, we use color to add interest and stuff to our, to our painting. So here I'll add a little bit around here, some of that green and get it going. What's all going to go on in there? I don't really have an idea yet. You know, I'm painting for you. And this is what I like to do. This is a painting I've never painted before. And so I like to, I like you to see this way, the, the process of creation. You know, I have my, I have my idea of a rose. I have my idea of a poppy. And usually out here in the, in the filming studio, I have lots and lots and lots of photos of everything that I'm studying out all around me. So I have all kinds of ideas of poppies, roses, and all different kinds of things that I can look at, that I can, uh, you know, pull from pull ideas or shapes or, you know, maybe this one bends this way or so, you know, and um, uh, I I have those around, but I, I don't have any, you know, I haven't painted this design before. So, of course, I've painted roses before and I've painted things before, but uh, this is all, this is all new for me here, painting this like this. So, I'll uh, come in here, let's drop a little bit of a stem in through here like this that's the idea now let's go in so that uh, some of you can um, you know not worry about that rose too much let's go put some colors into the rose I'm gonna take some of these oranges and and stuff right up here into this rose and I want to get some of these yellows here too I want to get some of those yellows into this rose I want this rose to carry a lot of a lot of colors a lot of interest and I want those reds in there so I'll have some of those reds into those colors there as well here. Now, you know, I'm not really doing any half toning yet. I'm just setting up some colors that I can work into. So white, when we have white, especially in the heritage, the heritage white is really opaque. Um, and white can really destroy stuff really quickly. So uh, that's one reason why I have so much color onto that there. So I don't lose it too much when I start stroking into the, the white here. So let's, let's go in and let's start to build a rose. Let's build the bowl of the rose up here like this. I'm just going to stroke down through that. Okay. Now, and I really kind of want this to dry up a little bit. So I don't want to paint too long. I don't want to paint into the wet as much because I want to do a... I want to half tone this quite a bit. So this will be the main petal here coming up. It's a, it's a, a little big, but that's okay. I'm just taking some light, some yellows, and some of my gray colors that I had here, and maybe even some uh, some lighter yellow that I'm going to work right into here. I'll work this back side of the rose here. I'm just going to casually work some of this color in here, and see what I'm doing is. What my process, what I'm thinking is, I want this rose to carry a lot of color in it. I want it to have a lot of things going on, really to compete against these bright little poppies that I have here. You know, so I want to get those colors pretty bright in here. So let's come in and let's build a little bit more light here. Let's add just a touch of that red to that, that naphtha red light, that warm red to that. Let's build just a bit more here. Now, if I want to soften that into that, I have my light. I go to my dark here. I go right in between the two to create a half tone. And I can strike that tone right into there. And that would soften that down here into the bowl of the rose. Or vice versa here. Let's say I want to really take a, um, let's take a, a darker tone green, a nice shadow, red, violet, uh, yellow and black here. It's a beautiful shadow tone for this rose down in here. And it'll help create that contrast. So, and if I want this to start to come out of this, I can use any tone. I can add some yellow. I can add some white here. But I want to do, here's my petal I just made. Here's my other one. I want to come right halfway between in not only value but in tone come right in halfway in between there, those things, and start to to um, soften it out. Now, if I move to the light side of the petal, I go this way, touch into that, and stroke here, and that will soften that tone a little bit more. If I go, if I want to go to the shadow, I go this way, touch into this, 
and this works the shadow side of it there and that's the halftone technique that's what I'm doing so I go this way into the light this way into the shadow and I can have other little stopgap colors here yellows greens all kinds of other fun little things there um, to uh, to you know build this rose or make it uh, really come to life here so I can do some more of that here but let's build let's go a little lighter let's build just a little bit more go a little bit lighter um, I'm going to push some petals out this way. This is where the rose, this is going to be the bowl of the rose here. It's going to come up this way. This is, and I want to just create some movement here. The opening of this rose, and build this around. Um, I want to restate, I'm going to take some red and red violet right over here, kind of dark. I want to restate the center of this rose again. And I like to do, you know, restate colors many times, especially in a painting here, because I'm painting for colors and movement here. So I restate stuff many, many times. And sometimes I like just a bang of a pure color to show up, especially these kind of colors when I'm working with this and these poppies here. Now, the other thing I, I should always mention is you see a lot of it. I always have a paper towel in my hand like this, and I'm constantly wiping my brush. And you haven't noticed me clean my brush. I haven't really cleaned it out in water, even though I have it there. I like to, um, when I'm working half tones back and forth, matter of fact, most of the time when I'm painting, I very seldom clean my brush. I wipe the brush and move to the next tone. And you can do that very easy with the Heritage because the Heritage is heavy pigmented uh, color. So you can do that pretty easy. Um, let's go back to our, our uh, lighter colors here and let's start working. Uh, let's work, we'll shape up our rows here just a bit more here. So where well, we have some lights here and some color movements here. We'll push those in. Let's soften that down just a bit here. Head back. I can soften that petal into the next one by pushing some of that half tone in there. And, um, and this will help me kind of shape up my rows here just a bit. Um, I want to, um, I'm gonna curve a, a, a petal into there, but I want to also have a petal here that is gonna pull in and out. So these will be the reaching petals. So my bowl is going to come here and my reaching petals will come out just a bit here like that. And uh, let's take a little bit of this light. Let's curve this up and around like this and close up that bowl just a bit more. Grab a little bit more white now and build this right into here. Now, if I want to soften, let's say I take that stroke right there and I go, whoop, that's just a little too much. One of the things I can do is lift it out. Just take my brush and lift some of that out there like that. And uh, boy, that worked pretty well. The other thing is create a little half tone. Create a little half tone. So let's make a little bit of lighter pink coming in and out of here, this rose here, like that. And just pull in and out like this. And uh, so we'll see those back edges. Now that back there is just a, a bit too much. So we'll just put a little darker orange kind of half tone on it to soften it down into place here. Let's um, come back out, go back to our grays here and some whites and some grays. And we'll push just this lighter um, tone here so it sits up on top of that rose. Now, I have this in here, and if I want to soften that down, there's my gray tone. So I'll head back towards my gray tone, and I'll just put some of that halfway in between my brush right there, and just soften that out just a bit there so that that uh, petal stays a little softer. And I can add, let's go down here and put a little orange into this brush. I can add a little orange or another little petal there. I can add a stroke, a, a little more light into that. And this is what artists start to do. We start to look at the, the tones we're putting in here. If I want to soften something in there, head that's heading to the shadow, so I head towards my shadow color and soften that with a stroke right in there like that. Um, I want to head a little bit to the light and lift the petals of the rose out here like this towards the light and then down towards the shadow, so I start to move my brush down here towards the shadow, 
and head that shadow right there into the rose that way and uh, let's get some let's get some other tones in here let's get some of our oranges back in there let's push a little bit of those tones in here and again see that those little oranges are so pretty they start to pick up some of those other tones there let's get back up towards our light let's add some more because I'm building the light I'm not anywhere near how light this rose is going to go I'm just slowly building it let's build here let's build our light a little again one more time here like that okay we'll build the light here now as I come down towards the shadows I'll head down here I'll half tone I won't go all the way to the shadow I'll go halfway down to it here and just add a few of those softer strokes see I'm not blending I'm painting with tones and when you step back and you look at it then the eye your the viewers eye starts to soften those tones as well so here I'll take a strike of that tone I want to lighten that up just a bit right in here here like that we'll add a little bit of a half tone shadow right there and we'll soften that just a bit there with a little stroke like that now a little mark stroke like that sometimes I'll push like this up into let's go down towards my half tones not my complete lights let's go down into this area here push in just a bit and that allows me to uh, pick up a little more defined color if I want to define a petal a, a touch more onto the rose or let's define a, a touch more of a tip right onto that one there like that um, let's go back and take some of our reds and oranges here and collapse this side down just a bit here here that's good um, maybe a little bit more of a shadow now if this starts to dry and this shadow area here is drying on my palette now and so I just model up or mix up some more color here doesn't have to be the same tone just has to be and as a matter of fact it's prettiest if it's not it's prettiest if you let that tone change a little bit let's take just a touch of that tone right down into the center of this rose here like that too that's pretty in there uh, let's make a real nice pretty pink some and maybe a little cool the the red violet makes a pretty pink as well um, let's get some of this little pink color moving right down in through here and set some back down through here again in there before we get lighter maybe towards the yellows here we'll build up lighter here I'm moving towards my lights here and I got a little bit of a red edge on that brush I see I'm watching my palette here I had a little bit of a red edge and when I'm stroking on the palette here like this I'm looking to see if my brush is clear if my brush is making a good stroke then when I see that then I know I'm ready to go to make that light stroke here again right out like that that brush is ready to go now I have this tone and I have that light tone let's so I'm here and that's that other tone right down there let's head down towards it put some of that into the brush and let's put a half tone right in there and that'll soften that petal let's put another one right there and that'll soften that uh, petal right into where we want it to go here let's take a, a couple of light pink strokes maybe right out here and push just a, a bit of that right into the edges of that rose there and a little grayed half tone right there with that just to uh, soften that <coughs> excuse me let's build a little more white because I really like the light petals up here into the front of this rose let's build more I'm gonna pick up more white here and really texturize that light white right in there because I want to paint you know I'm gonna paint these roses just or this whole painting a little bit more impressionistic with a half tone now I'm I'm looking for this darker tone right in there halfway to it right down there put a little bit of that brush push and lift off and lift off some of that extra white we just stroked on there 
And if I lift off too much, I just go add it back in again. And then lift that back off until I get the, the look that I like. That's better. That's kind of pretty. I like those looks there. Um, if I want to give a little bit more to the bowl, I can lift off this way here. A little bit more to the bowl there on that flower. And um, let's build this a bit. Touch more here. Right in there like that. Let's put this light little edge here. Um, maybe a bit more yellow. I really wanted to have kind of a yellow orange right down in here to kind of carry that look of those poppies right there into my rose. Let's get some of that rose, that yellow, right down into here as well. Let that come into this rose here. There we go. And again, it's, I'm painting this all pure acrylic. You saw me, you know, squirt this out. And this is a summer day here. It's uh, 92 degrees outside today. Of course, it's 72 here in the studio. But uh, a lot of people say, oh, I live in real hot areas and stuff like this. I'm painting with this with acrylic. It's 92 degrees outside. And uh, you haven't, you know, I'm using some extender. But the thing is, one of the things is that... When we use a lot of water and a paint with our acrylic, and this it, it works, and it's same with the heritage. Um, you know, you the paint thins out, and the water, of course, evaporates out real fast, and they dry. What I'm doing here is using more and more and more paint. As I use more and more and more paint, there's more paint building up onto the surface here, and it's staying wet or longer. Now, I don't really need it to stay wet because I'm using a, a toning technique here. As a matter of fact, it, it does hinder me every once in a while if it stays wet for too long. But, uh, you know, it it is a, uh, um, you can keep it wet, especially if you're painting globals, you can keep it wet just by using more and more paint. So acrylic painters tend to paint a little thin and that, um, that will get in your way when you want to, uh, you know, when you want to really get some uh, some extended techniques. But, uh, you know, uh, that is my biggest thing that I've always go around and tell all of my students is you need more paint. You need more paint. You need to build that paint. And it's scary sometimes you start getting a lot of paint on the surface and it, you know, and but it's very controlled. Here I'll add just a touch of light right out there to the tip of that petal. I like little touches like that here and if I want to soften that out I'll pick out that little bit of pink let's tone that just a bit and I'll just put it a little stroke right there a little half tone right there to soften that uh, that out there on on that particular flower let's come down here to the bottom um, I'm gonna head down towards the darks I think I'm gonna define let's head down to my reds and down to those real nice shadows here and let's head those right down in here and really kind of put the bottom of this rose in more into a shadow. So let's grab some red. Let's grab some yellow, some black here, which is really, I love that red, yellow, black, green. Let's cool it off with a red violet here. And uh, let's drop some of that right into here, right into this area. Matter of fact, we'll add some more right into the rose there to the lower side of this rose right in there. But let's get a, a little bit more deep right down into here, pull some of this out. Let this rose really uh, get its contrast down there. Maybe a bit more red or pinky kind of color here. There, like that. And uh, just a little bit of a light half tone heading to that light there. Here out like that. That's kind of pretty. Let the light diminish coming down into here. Maybe some little edges or something like that. As these diminish down here, right in there, into those areas here. And you don't need to do too much here. You know, there's other roses I paint that are more super realistic. This one is, of course, very casual. Um, and But with this one, I don't need to do that much. Your, your eye is saying enough of a rose here. This build it. That's a nice little bright pinky color there. Let's add a little light. 
uh, tips out here a bit more. I like those edges. I like those wispy edges. Of course, those wispy edges, you know, step back because those wispy edges will disappear when you start to step back. Always step back and take a look. Um, little edges, little curved edges of some dark. Maybe there's a dark little petal there. Um, you know, it comes in. And I used to always be um, a little afraid of making those types of strokes. Now I just go do them. Put those darks and stuff in there. Get some of those strokes in. Build those here. There we go. That's kind of pretty. Around like that. So that's kind of... So you see just how we build that rose. It's really kind of fun. And so I'll put on a light stroke. And you know, work your palette up here with my lights. And if I if I want to go more red or so, I can head over here towards my greens. But the thing is, is I'm watching these tones. If I'm working in this area and this is my darker, then I head this way, head this way, all the way to that way. Each time making a little bit darker of a, of a tone. And um, I like to do that. Now, this is probably dried up a bit. So I'm going to go back and restate that yellow in there a bit more, a little bit brighter get just a little bit more of a yellow in there. Now, how do you soften that? Well, we have our yellow, then we need to head over towards our orange, which was right over here, and I need to get it a half tone. So I go, not quite to orange, I go to a yellow orange into my brush right there, and I push that right on that edge, and see that softens that and gives it a beautiful coloring in here. Push just a little bit of that. Now, um, I want to soften that just a bit so I see that that's getting towards my shadow of my red and red violet which comes down here so I start to head my brush that way and I'll soften that back just a bit right in there like that that worked pretty nice let's get uh, just a touch more of my red right here maybe this is the the front edge here of a darker again uh, a uh, front petal here of this little poppy pointed down that way there like that that works out pretty nice I'll get some other darker little tones of that now I hit that right there and I'll soften that I'll just head right up towards my here grab a little bit of that light tone and push it right into place doesn't hurt it maybe push just a touch more brighter yellow right there in that very center that's kind of nice here. Now the poppies, when you go to paint uh, poppies, they have, you know, green centers, yellow centers, all kinds of different ones. I'm going to use a, a yellow green here on the corner of my brush. And I'll push in a little bit of yellow green right there into the corner of my brush. Let's go a little bit more of a yellow green, brighter yellow green here right on the edges there. We'll do that. Sometimes I'll just touch that with my finger, but I want to leave that casual. If I want to really soften that, I'll just push a little orange onto my brush here and just go right over that and just soften that just a bit or touch into a little bit more red. If I'm going down this way, I'm starting to see the red, red violet. Push that into your brush and soften that right in there like that. So that's that's how you do the half tone. You're not really blending it, you know, per se, blending it. I'm going to pick up a a little bit of Hansa yellow and white. I'm going to tap that more into the, like the that center button that's in the the poppies there, like that. And um, you know we can go ahead and put all of the uh, stamen and stuff out there if you want. You could use a liner brush. I'm just going to use the corner of my brush like this. I'll balance my little finger on here, and I'll add some little suggestive dots of it here. And just kind of let them fade away down here. Just brush kind of in. So you only really see them on one side here. Just tap through like that. So you don't see them too much to the other side there. And we'll add a few light ones out here. Probably use a smaller brush would be easier. But, you know, I'm painting casual here. And one of the things I don't want to do, again, you have to step back and look at it. But one of the things I don't want to do 
is make perfect round little dots that will destroy this painting. So I use the corner of the brush so I don't get perfect little dots. I don't want perfect little dots. I just want the impression of some of this uh, center movement here. We'll put just idea of the center there like that. Um, I could probably have one or two little more right out through here like this. Just to say I did it <clears throat> there. Um, maybe some toned ones down here. Right out here, a little suggestive of those right there. This one is, uh, we've kind of turned to the back side there. I should probably maybe bring in just a bit more orange right to the front. So it really shows up as a front petal there. So we'll get a little lighter orange. And again, I'll put that stroke of that lighter orange there just like that and I'll head towards a half tone towards my reds here put some of that in this to soften that back like that and that helps turn that that uh, that poppy there let's push I've got I want just I don't want it real bright so I might put a little yellow green into this here a um, little bit more orange right into that one just because it gives just a bit more interest there Maybe a touch of that right out there like that. Very, very casual. I love the casual paint. Of course, you know, thousands of artists out there doing all different kinds of things, you know, with the casualness to uh, to the flowers. And then how much you actually bring these edges in is going to be up to you and to your painting here. And... Uh, you know, so I put a little more dark on there. Let me just put a little half tone of an orange. So I'll, I was down there, really, that's where I was looking at. So I want to come with a tone that's a little closer to that and push that right there. You can see you get that beautiful look right there. And let's go just a half tone more to the orange right in there. And that's just a beautiful uh, look to these. To these poppies like that that beautiful look to those colors pushing like that now you can um you know you can um kind of crepe up the edges or you, call, you know make the make more shadows highs and lows and stuff like that into these if you want you know this uh, that's all up to you i'm going to keep them a little bit softer so they don't compete too much with my rows here and uh, I add a final couple little uh, petals here to uh, the front of my rose. After I got those done, let that just kind of fade away there. Um, you know, and, and I'll decide on the, the center, maybe a, a little more green right down there into the touch into the center of that uh, rose. I kind of like those uh, touches. Now, let's just add <clears throat> some very impressionistic leaves some um, yellow and black that's one of my favorite greens to use i like to of course cool it with a little red violet sometimes i'll add the tiniest little bit of blue you got to be careful that thalo blue it goes it'll take these really green really fast and uh, let's just get very playful here with uh, some of our green greenery here just let's try to um stay very loose sometimes I'll take some of my rose color right into my greenery here that's really pretty that makes a nice toned kind of green color that works right out here and and uh, works very pretty out to these outside areas here well, let's get uh, a little more blue black and some yellow here and um, just make a a little bit more of a cooler shadow type green maybe a little red violet in it if it to tone it back down and add a touch or two of that into those shadow areas there as well here let's build some of that you can negative paint right up here like this which uh, will bring out the edge of that rose there if you want to bring out that edge a bit of that rose if you want to 
kind of push. I love the colors when they get sticky. Sometimes I'll push them like that, push those colors in together. And, um, you know, sometimes I'll soften it with a, a bit of a half tone. Sometimes I'll just push them together here. Let's uh, add in just a bit of extender. Not really to, uh, that's a little dark, so let's lighten that up. Uh, not really to blend it or anything. I'm just, I use the extender as a moisture to help the, the paint move here. Yeah, that's... Just, let's just push that out there like that just a bit. See, so you put that extender, you get enough of that extender out there. And see, this is dry out here, but you push it and it looks like it's blending. But it's actually just real thin color here. Let's get that a little bit. I, and if you notice, I'm constant, constantly playing my greens. Now, you know, that's one thing that, uh, oh, I like that worked edge there. That just kind of diminishes down like that, that that working of that edge with those colors see I like that when that happens that comes in there and uh, gives you a different look that's just kind of pretty get a little playful here with some of this out here it makes it all pretty Just use, I and when I do that, I use different corners of the brushes, different things, you know. Um, let's get a little more yellow and black here. More of our base greens. Get some of this down through here. Um, I can push a, a, a suggestive other rose back there. Just take some of my colors back through here. And let's just suggest, like maybe there's another rose back here. So, and this is where I, this is all kind of dried up, so I've just loosened it up with some extender and stuff, some of these colors, and I'll just push it right back down in here like this, and push that in there. You know, you don't, this is my thing, you know, when I, uh, in all the years I've been painting, I used to always try to, you know, uh, paint directly a, a rose that made it look like a rose. Now, you know, once I have one rose done, I, I tend to kind of just paint impressions, and then the viewer will say, okay, those are the same colors, that's another rose. And what I find over time is that whenever I take that cool or dark and I paint the center, that's when the viewer really starts to see the rose. If I ever start to just paint a center, then the viewer will see a rose. Now let's take a half tone of that and soften that coming out just a bit here. Let's take a, let's go a half tone warmer here up to the lighter part here and just build the front of that rose just a bit more here. So it sits back there. Maybe see a, a little bit more clear. Let's go towards the orange just a bit, uh, like a petal or so of it or something like that. You know, just stay impressionistic back in there. Don't. Don't get too carried away with shape because then the viewer can't imagine what it is. So you have to just kind of, you know, just stay impressionistic. Let's restate some of our uh, stems here with that brown, which is about two parts red to one part uh, here of the, um, of the black. I'll just break some of that off there like that. It's kind of pretty. And, um, Let's sometimes I'll add greens and stuff to that to make some different colors and different tones that I'm going to add in here. I love these brownish tones. These are beautiful tones that can go in here. Just strokes of them. If you get something that is too much, uh, too much of a, a, a mark, then you know just create a half tone and soften it out. Add um you know here I'll make more of my green over here where I'm doing the reds. And you know these are beautiful runs of the red to the yellow brown to the to the green here. It's a beautiful run of greens here, slightly different, not the blue that I have over there. This is a different run here, and sometimes I will make. Um, and I want to be kind of careful here. Not I'm just going to see what it looks like. Uh, I sometimes I will make more distinct, perfect like little leaves here. When 
maybe a, a little bit of a stem line there that's going to that you know and, and a couple of little leaves coming out here like this especially the outside area now sometimes I do that and I like how some of the the French painters I studied did that and how they create those little looks like that that just pulls your eye down here away from your center of interest um, it, it creates a, a extra little um, kind of like unexpected thing and that unexpected adds interest and stuff to your painting so you know sometimes I'll do that but this is a completely uh, different type of look for you the halftone technique is very pretty um, and you're you're just and I'm painting here only in acrylic I mean pure acrylic I have no global colors or anything like that I'm painting pure acrylic I'm just going to increase the contrast here a bit with some of that beautiful brown I love that and this that red and black and some red violet here and some green I mean some ye Hansa yellow these are all beautiful tones in here with this but that black and yellow and those beautiful beautiful types of tones let's get some of those deep deep tones in there and um, get those a little lighter and warmer let's even get right up here very grayed soft I don't want it really green I want kind of green here grayed soft color here whoops got to hit a little bit of that black I'm watching my palette I hit a little of that black and I, that would make a terrible stroke so let's clean that out a bit here yeah we'll get a little playful take this out just a bit there like that um, you know maybe you know I'll look out into some areas like this and I'll say yeah let's just give a suggestion of some more color here just a little bit more suggestion here maybe there's just another little rose or something out there here light side a little light back there like that and uh, then just play some soft greens and stuff there with it I don't like that let's it's a little too much use the paper towel there take some of that out so whenever you see this streak like this that shows there's a lot of moisture and that's the paint there see you see a lot of moisture in it see how wet that paint is whereas before where I was very dry with the paint you can see it drying up here on my palette now um, but very dry on the paint I get that little granulated stroke and I like to have that so this one right here is more of a granulated dry stroke this one right here is a wet stroke and when I'm coming in and getting really playful with stuff and doing things I like to have combinations of the two here and uh, you know into the into the painting I like combinations of them uh, and so that I get differences in you know some of the uh, looks and stuff that I have here so uh, here we'll just kind of push this out right towards a leaf shape there it's not a great leaf but it's not bad it looks kind of like a leaf step back from it step back from your painting and let's go back and look at that camera there you know yeah it's it looks pretty good it it it's softer it, it looks pretty good now you can come back in here and you can uh, restate um, a little bit of your um, you know light blue or something like that you can come back in here you can make more def definite um, you know leaves if you want that's all up to you you know I'm, I might make a, a little bit more of a definite leaf here that will lead the viewer up here towards uh, towards this uh, rose and stuff so let's put a little light yellow right up here right here that uh, leaves the view uh, leads the viewer here up towards these uh, other um, this other area right in here I'll just leave some of that right in there maybe a, a light stroke I sometimes I like to leave a little bit of that background showing through you know just different little hits and different things you can do let's get a little bit of a blue green here now I didn't really use a lot of a blue, a blue green 
but just a, a little different green here, hitting just a few areas here. Move that through the painting here and there. Little touches of that. When you add those little touches, now if you want that to soften out, all you got to do is find that other tone. So I have that color there, and that tone, that other tone's right over here. I go with a half tone right in between. And if I take that tone and hit right there, it immediately becomes softer, see? And I'll push that in there. That is the half tone technique, okay? So rather than working at blending or anything like that, and if you work it too much, you kill the painting. You kill the interest of the painting. So with the half tone technique, the artist keeps the stroke there, and then to soften its effect, its its uh, contrast effect with the other stroke, you put a, a color right between the two, right on that edge, and soften it down. Then the eye, you know, uh, you know, starts to soften it out. The greatest way to really imagine, and this was told to me many, many years ago, to imagine the halftone technique is you pick up the sand from the beach and you see all of these little grains of sand and all these different colors. And then you put them down and you look down across the beach and it all looks like, you know, of course you see lights and darks, but you don't see any of the pebbling. Your eyes blending it to a smooth transition of tones. That's what happens when you step back and you step back to that camera there, you step back, you see this smooth transition of tones and then you come up close and you see more movements and stuff like that uh, into the strokes, you know, and that's up to you, you know, how much you do. That's the, the half tone technique. Now I have 20 different variations of the half tone techniques that I use. I just wrote another book. It's coming out uh, next month. I wrote another book on uh, mastering roses, painting roses with the halftone technique, and I show uh, six or four different halftone techniques in each of the lessons there. And then there's halftone techniques that I use that I use to copy realistic flowers, tone painting of realism, uh, getting something very, very realism. Here it's more of an impressionistic uh, halftone technique. So, uh, but you can you get the idea. You're working through your colors and um, you know you're painting up and down your values your values you know keep your lights and your darks and and your different tones and you're planning right back and forth between these tones uh, that way all right so and it's kind of fun it makes kind of a fun painting hope you enjoyed it thanks very much for joining me as like I said before uh, you know drop us a comment down there we appreciate it we appreciate uh, you helping uh, you know promote and share our channel so we can show you more stuff um, Consider the, uh, you know, the heritage acrylics if you want to move into some of these techniques. Like I say here, I painted with them today just right straight out of the tube. You can see them. Um, many times I paint with them into their little plastic containers, and I'll show you how to paint those globally. But right out of the tube works just as well, um, and it, especially if you're doing halftone techniques. You're doing visually halftone techniques. You know, you may consider coming in and putting a little bit more lights or something like that. That's all up for you to decide. I think that's all I'm going to do on this particular one. I kind of like it. It's different. Okay. Thanks very much for joining me. Look for more of our videos and stuff here uh, on our channel. Also go out and check out uh, JansenArtOnline.com. JansenArtOnline.com. That is our online teaching. Those of you want to, you know, and I'm, I'm starting up next month, an online class that's going to run for several months. Uh, probably six months or so on painting flowers using a, a variety of techniques. So those of you that want to learn more about flowers and roses and, you know, poppies and anemones and all kinds of dianthus, all kinds of flowers, we're going to paint a large variety of them and uh, from both impressionistic and realistic uh, types of techniques. Look to that online class. It's going to be uh, starting up in, in a month or so. And uh, But we'll have information up on Jansen Art Online. And you can always write to our studio. Visit jansenartstudio.com. There you can sign up on our newsletter so you don't miss any information on it. We send out uh, newsletters on weekly and bi-weekly, uh, bi-monthly, and uh, so you can see everything we have going on, okay? Thanks very much for joining me. I look forward to uh, showing you some other fun things about art that is just, uh, you know, just, just so much fun. Have some fun with your brushes. Use your brush at different corners, edges, corners, tap, and be confident. Be confident in what you do. It's only paint. You can change it really easy with a half tone, okay? All right. I'll see you guys later. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.